Hello, Mrs. Catherton. Can I come round and show you the pamphlets yeah. for the fake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let yourself in, okay? I've just got to do a piece to camera. Huh? Oh. See you later. <laughs> Our world today is safer than it's ever been, certainly safer than it was in medieval times. There's no packs of wolves roaming the countryside, gobbling villagers whole and then dabbing their lips dry on the nearest bit of tapestry. No bubonic plague blackening your fingertips and then turning your armpits into putrefied pockets of human wax. No witch finders killing your wife. These days, we've got it easy and there's ever so little to be frightened of. But the moment they appear on TV, even the quaintest surroundings can suddenly seem dramatically more dangerous. The peaceful county of Devon is home to one of England's largest fireworks factories, but the tranquility is shattered. When a tiny spark sets off 18,000 pounds of explosives. Television's slightly hysterical take on the world has a way of coloring your everyday experience as we'll see throughout this series. It often functions as a magic mirror providing an endless stream of mesmerising unpleasantness. <laughs> it shows you arresting tales of gory, bloody murder. Imagine the height of the back swing to get spray marks that long. Horrifying visions of mankind's inevitable demise. Eerily disturbing imagery designed to sell you protection. So who knows what your family could be eating and more petrifying news coverage than you can shake a fear stick at. Is Britain sliding toward chaos? No wonder all these people are so terrified on the inside. They're not even safe in their own homes as they sit there staring at a machine that warns them worse is to come. This week, how TV ruined your life by shouting boo in your mind. Don't say it didn't, it did. It can happen anywhere, to anyone. An ordinary street, a moment's thoughtlessness. <laughs> That's a characteristically cheerful public information film, or PIF, one of many thousands of government-approved mini-horror movies designed to fear you into not going all dead. Mike, look out! Early public information films consisted of patronising cartoons... A bicycle isn't at all under control when ridden freehand. ..hysterical bollockings... Polish a floor, put a rug on it. You might as well set a man trap. ..or cautionary tales which simply barked at you like a Joe Bugner. Hey, what are you thinking of doing? Come back here. Go on, Joe, knock some sense into him. If you go on like that, you could be in big trouble. Mm, you know, it's a bit rich taking health and safety advice from a man who hits people in the face for a living. Effectively, this was the man using television to command you, the citizen, to behave for your own good. That's better. Be smart. Be safe. This man was safe. Until now. In the late 20th century, one of the greatest challenges facing the UK was the population's apparent ignorance of how a new technology known as electricity worked. And anyone who touches him also gets a shock. Compounding the issue, this widespread lack of knowledge coincided with a nationwide craze for leisure activities involving long conductive objects. Watch out! Oh, God. Those wires are alive! If you want to have fun and stay alive, keep away from overhead power lines. Yeah, and if you want to have fun but you're not fussed about staying alive, buy a kite. simply wouldn't have happened if he'd used a wooden kite. Idiot. In the light of such carnage, playing with an object not directly attached to your hands might have seemed like a sensible option, unless, like famous electrocution victim Jimmy, you lobbed it up a substation and got pussy whipped into retrieving it. Go on, get it. Pass me that bit of wood. Careful, Jimmy, you don't want to get splinters breaking into that high-voltage substation. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Now, now you cry. A minute ago, it was all, Oh, go and get it, Jimmy. Oh, do it for me, Jimmy. I mean, I'd call her a typical woman, but she isn't. She's just a horrid little girl. Anyway, against the odds, Jimmy survived that incident and is still alive today. People still bring up the whole Frisbee thing. 
And I mean, yeah, it stung a bit, obviously, but it wasn't as grievous as they made out in the film. In some ways, having 66,000 volts zip through you can be quite pleasant. I actually work in toy design now. We're trying to create a less aerodynamic frisbee to protect future generations. Me and Sal are still together. We really bonded after the accident, much as my trainers bonded to my feet due to the intense heat generated. As we've seen, many early piffs had a nakedly bossy hue. But today, the establishment holds less sway and the man in the street no longer responds to the voice of authority ordering them about. What would you say if David Cameron told you not to throw a frisbee up a pylon? I'd do it anyway. Hence, piffs have changed tack and the authoritarian instruction has largely been removed, leaving behind nothing but cold horror in its wake. Today's piffs are little more than a ruthless cavalcade of raw physical horror, gory slapstick and jaw-droppingly morbid appeals to personal guilt. Ah, oh, typical kids today, just lying around. Cheer up, mate. At least you got a free draft excluder out of it. But in our putrid modern hell, it's not just cars and pylons that will hurt you. No, you're a danger to yourself. If you're not puffing your way to a personal clogged pipe Armageddon, you're boozing yourself dumb and tumbling from a scaffold, or peak docketing yourself before heading out on the tiles. Rather than using calm reason, most corrective television uses fear to hammer its message home. It's one of the most powerful ways to grab an audience's attention, but why? Well, for one thing, no matter how sophisticated we humans appear to be with our fancy shoes and Nintendo Wiis and whatnot, our brains are still cursed with a paleomammalian limbic system which the modern iPad-owning part of us can't control. Our fear responses are governed by twin almond-shaped clusters of nuclei known as the amygdalae, sort of primitive reactionary mind nuts beyond the reach of human intellect, a bit like TalkSport presenters. The point of the amygdalae is essentially protection. You're supposed to be stimulated when confronted by a loud noise or a sudden movement because, well, it could be a lion leaping in to attack you. That's why it's almost impossible to ignore anything which seems like a threat, be it a lion or a scary news reader. A strong possibility of attack. The Soil. The amygdala are also thought to be closely associated with memory, so if you have an unpleasant experience and your amygdala are stimulated, an association quickly forms in your head. That's why the man uses scare tactics to mould your behaviour from an early age. <laughs> 